Now we're very close to a solution. What we want to do is to solve this differential equation. We want to find the function v of y that satisfies this differential equation. And then we're going to guess that our v of y is going to take on such a form. So now we're going to substitute this expression back into this differential equation. And hopefully it will give us some relationship that will allow us to deduce what these constants cj should be. Once we find the constants cj, we will be able to construct this series, which would give us our solution v of y. And you can see that if I want to substitute this uh, expression inside this differential equation, I need to take the second derivative. I also need to take the first derivative. So let's do that first. So taking the first derivative. So this is rather straightforward. You just pull the j down. And you have power to the power of j minus 1. And then I'm going to perform a little trick here. And then I'm going to express this relationship slightly differently. So instead of writing j c j, I'm going to write this out as j plus 1 c subscript j plus 1 and then y to the power of j. And this is just a different way of expressing the exact same thing. So you can try substituting the num in the numbers, you'll see you get the exact same thing. So if you start at 0 over here, you just get 0 multiplied by something, so the 0 term doesn't count. And then if you substitute in j is equal to 1, you get 1 c 1 y to the power of 0. If you start from 0 over here, you substitute in 0, you get 1 uh, times c 1 to the uh, times y to the power of 0, which is exactly the same. And as you go on, uh, with the subsequent values of j, you can see that both of these expressions will give you the exact same thing. So this is just a different way of expressing the same thing. And then the reason why I'm doing this is because now that I have this y to the power of j term over here, later on when I substitute everything inside this expression, it's going to be a lot easier for me to combine everything together because all the terms will have a y to the power of j. So uh, I'm just doing this preemptively so preemptively so I can combine things easy, uh, uh, easily later on. So the next thing we're going to do is that we're going to differentiate this a second time. So d squared v dy squared and then we're just going to take the derivative of this term. So we have j plus 1 and then j and then c j plus 1 and then y to the power of j minus 1. And uh, this time I do not need to perform a trick like I did last time because you can see that there's a y over here so once you multiply it to this expression you get y to the power of j which is exactly what we want. So I don't need to shift the terms here for this expression. So now we're ready to substitute everything inside this differential equation. So first of all, we start off with, with uh, y times d squared v dy squared. So that would give us the sum of j is equal to 0 to infinity j plus 1 j c j plus 1 y to the power of j. Now here we have 2 times l plus 1 minus y. So I'm just going to deal with the l plus 1 term first. So we're going to have plus 2 times l plus 1 and the sum of j from 0 to infinity and then j plus 1. So we have j plus 1, c j plus 1, y to the power of j. And then for the second term, we have an extra y over here. If I keep using this term, we're going to have y to the power of j plus 1. So I'm, I'm going to use this term uh, for this, uh, for the case when I'm multiplying this y to the dv dy. So you can see that both of these expressions will be used. And don't worry, they're exact, they are the exact same thing. It's just a different way of expressing the same series. So for this second term, this minus y term, I now have minus 2, and then it is the sum j is equal to 0 to infinity. So now we're going to use this term. So we have j, c, j, and then y to the power of j. So don't forget there's a y. You multiply it inside the summation, so you get y to the power of j. And so this is the dv dy term. And now all that remains is this final term. This is rather simple. So we just add y naught minus 2 l plus 1. And then we just directly substitute in v of y, which is equal to this. So we have j equal to 0 to infinity cj y to the power of j. And now you can see that all this is going to be equal to 0. So this entire expression is equal to 0. Now obviously there's one thing we can do, so like I said before, we can combine everything together and because they're all multiplied by, uh, by y to the power of j. So we have this summation symbol, and then I'm just going to dump everything inside a bracket. So we have j plus 1, and also a j, I'm going to put this j at the front, and then times c j plus 1, and then we have plus 2l plus 1, so that's these terms times j plus 1, and then we have cj plus 1, 
and then we minus 2jcj, and then finally we have these terms. So we have plus y0 minus 2l plus 1, and then multiplied by cj, don't forget about that. And then all this is going to be multiplied by y to the power of j. And then all this is going to be equal to 0. So now we know that if this differential equation is going to be satisfied, eventually, if your solution takes on such a form, eventually you will arrive at something like this. So this sum over here should be equal to 0 for all values of y. But then if this is going to be equal to 0 for all values of y, you can see that y is going to, going to change, y could be any value. So in order for this to always hold, it must be the case that this coefficient over here, so this entire long string of terms over here, this is one giant coefficient, this entire term over here should be equal to 0. So that will ensure that for whatever value of y, this entire summation will always be equal to 0. And that will guarantee that our v of y is going to satisfy this differential equation. And so now we have obtained a relationship. So it's very important that we know now that this entire expression is equal to 0. So let's write this out. So now we know that the coefficients, so we have uh, j times j plus 1. And then what I'm going to do now is that I'm going to try to uh, group up uh, some of the terms together. So you see both of these terms have a c j plus 1. So I'm going to group them up together. So we have j times j plus 1. And then I plus 2 l plus 1. And then j plus 1. And then all this is going to be equal multiplied by c j plus 1. And then we have these terms multiplied by c j. So let's group those up together as well. So we have negative 2j. And then we just add these terms. So it's y0 minus 2l plus 1 cj. And then we know that this entire string of values should be equal to 0. So we know that all this is going to be equal to 0. And so now this now brings us to a very important relationship. Now you can see that we have an equation uh, with cj plus 1 and cj. And now I can re rearrange everything like this. So I'm going to keep cj plus 1 on the left. And then I'm going to dump the rest of the terms to the right. So I'm going to dump these over to the right. And you can see that, of course, I can combine these together. So I have 2l plus 1 and then plus j. So remember, I'm moving them to the other side. So the minus sign becomes a plus. And then the positive y0 becomes a negative y0. And then I'm going to divide all these terms over to the other side as well. So in the denominator, and also you can see that we can actually factorize these terms. I can pull the j plus 1 out. So I can pull the j plus 1 out. And then we have j plus 2l plus 2. And so we can see that we have obtained a recursive relationship. And also don't forget the cj. So there should be a cj here as well. And so there we have it. So you can see that we have obtained a recursive relationship where the next term in the series, so cj plus 1, is defined in terms of its previous term, cj. So if we can, if we set a value c0, we will be able to use this value, uh, use this formula to find c1, which is given by the left-hand side. And then we can take the c1 and substitute back, it back into here, and it would give us c2. And then we can take c2 and substitute it back into here, and it will give us c3. And this process just keeps on continuing, uh, on, uh, and continuing forever. So as long as your sequence satisfies this recursive relationship, then you will be able to use the constants that you have derived to construct your v of y. And then using those constants to construct your v of y, your v of y is going to be a solution that will satisfy this differential equation.